In this episode of Accelerator TV, we talk with Hamburger Eyes, the San Francisco photo collective known for their self-produced magazine. As the crew sets up for their book release party in the gallery of their Mission District photo lab and studio, they reflect on the collective's history and the iconic and intimate photos that are distinctly Hamburger Eyes. This episode is brought to you by Scion. For more information, go to scion.com. There's so much to photograph here on a daily basis. It's amazing. It's just kind of inspiring in every way, you know. I just found this new laundromat to do my laundry in. And like all the machines work, you know, everything's brand new. They have a raffle there. You can win like a DVD player. Every day they give away something. I don't know, that kind of stuff is just inspiring. <laughs> My name is Ray, Ray Potes. Not really, I think it just comes from a lot of things. Like it come, it, I think it comes from mainly from that, those Bugs Bunny cartoons, you know, where there's a skinny dude and a fat dude and they're on the island and they're looking at each other like food, you know. That guy sees the skinny guy and he's like a hot dog, in the shape of a hot dog and the other guy has a hamburger. And then my friends just started saying it like, it, it could mean anything, like, um, that, guy, that girl's giving you hamburger eyes, you know? The way I think about it is just the, the stuff that's around me. It's my life, you know what I mean? And it's just my way of writing in a journal, but it's visual because I suck at writing. I kind of feel like in life, like me and a lot of my friends and a lot of these people involved, like, don't really have like a specific category we fit in. So hamburger eyes kind of became like the category. And then um, I kind of just felt like it still doesn't fit, you know? It still doesn't fit in, in a magazine world. Advertisers aren't interested, which is like, I think it's sometimes it's frustrating financially, but I think it's really gratifying because, you know, I've kind of always been like, fuck the world anyways. But that's my, my take on it. I mean, everyone has their own take, you know? And it's, it's more collectively, you know? It's, like, Ray's a lot more peaceful and connected, you know, than me. I went into a, a store on Haight Street that I think now sells um, uh, nipple rings, but at the time it was selling magazines, and uh, I was looking through them and saw an early edition of Hamburger Eyes, and uh, it knocked me out. I did like that there were a lot of photographers shooting on the street. Um, Ray did an amazing job with uh, his layout and it brought to mind uh, the family of man which was a profound influence on what I was doing. I emailed Ray and said, geez I think your stuff is great and uh, I'm having a show you should take a look and I think, I think that's pretty much how we connected to begin with. There was a big article in the paper, and uh, the name is very catchy, so you're gonna go, what the heck is this? And then you find out a little bit about, you see some of the images, and you go, wow, kind of rough and raw, mm -hmm. kind of nice. See, I have a more of a, a formal education where there's these kind of critiques, and you learn about the history, and uh, it, for me, uh, I, I mean, I always love shooting, but it tend to be a bit of an over-analysis. What I liked and like about what's going on here is it's not so precious. You just take pictures and you can even see if you come to the show, they're pinned to the wall. And sometimes they're stacked on top of each other. It's, it's not a, treated very preciously. And yet there is real passion to photograph. I guess it was 2001. <laughs> um, I was working at Kinko's, 
I was already making other zines and I, one day I made hamburger eyes. I started making zines because instead of sending all my friends in California different photos, I could just make a zine and send them all a zine and they would all kind of know what I was up to and vice versa. And they send me photos and I'll throw them in there too. Um, and that's kind of how it started. And then with Hamburger Eyes, um, it just kind of continued that, but also it kind of made Hamburger Eyes more about, um, about people. And I think that's what some people like about it, you know, like people kind of like the juxtaposition of the photos. Um, one time this dude wrote some stuff on it compared to like writing a song, you know, fast parts and slow parts. I try to visualize it like a, like a storyline that, I mean, obviously doesn't make any sense, but you know, when I try, like in my head somehow it comes, comes out. For the most part, I try to like ease into the story, you know, the end. Is it comedy, you know, how, does someone die at the end? If I, if I could afford color, yeah, it would have been color since day one. People like real fit and think we're like really anti-digital and stuff. But we're not, it's just at the time when I said that, I said that in an interview for the Chronicle. At the time I said it was like four or five years ago. Like two megapixel camera was it, you know? The, the, the five megapixel was luxury item, you know? You know, I shoot a lot in the Mission District of San Francisco, and um, there's a picture in there of uh, somebody dressed as Zorro on 24th Street. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a hamburger ice photograph, yes. Oh yeah, I think, there, <laughs> I think there's a shot of a guy passed out and he's puking on himself, sucking his thumb. <laughs> Probably be the guy who's got his shirt off and his car's on fire, and that was in Los Angeles. Like cover of issue five or something. The girl with the tooth missing. That one. I felt like when she did that, I was like, wow, that's really like perfect. But then um, as time went on, I just still think it becomes more and more dumb. I think that's why I don't have any tattoos or anything, because I feel like if I got one, like a year later, I'd think it's the stupidest thing. But at the time, it was the coolest. I went to Cal Arts. He was just a student there. We had lots of people there. You know, and, well, I won't name drop. But David was just that was just a party. He was dancing. <laughs> Can you tell it's him? We're talking '72 or three. It's because obviously recently he's been kind of on YouTube looking a little differently. Michael, Mikhail, Cardboard Box, Dance Floor, 1-800, 1-900, a small tweak makes a big difference.